Hello everyone and welcome to this video on the Python programming language and machine learning. So in this video we are going to create a program to classify a person as having a heart disease also known as a cardiovascular disease or not using machine learning. Now currently I'm on Google's website called colab.research.google.com because it makes it really easy to start programming in Python. So you don't have to install anything just go to this website log in using your Google account and get started writing your code. So let's go ahead and get started writing our Python code. So the first thing that you're going to want to do is click on File and go down to New Notebook, where a new tab will open up for you and a new cell will open up for you. Now, in the cell, before we, before we write our program, I want to create a description of the program that we're going to create. And I'm going to do this in comments. So this program classifies a person as having a cardiovascular disease or not. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about cardiovascular disease. So a cardiovascular disease again is also known as heart disease and it is generally referred to the condition that involves a blocked blood vessel or a narrowed blood vessel that can lead to a heart attack or chest pain or a stroke. Other heart conditions such as those that affect your heart's muscle, valves, or rhythm also are considered forms of heart disease. And many forms of heart disease can be prevented or treated with healthy lifestyle choices. So that is coming directly from Mayo Clinic. So be sure to check that out. I think it's pretty fascinating that we might be able to detect if a person has a heart disease and then and do this basically through data and then be able to, to say, hey, you have this disease. Maybe you should change your lifestyle choices and then we can help prevent them from having something like a heart attack or chest pains or stroke and all this just from data. So anyways, let's go ahead and get started with the program. So the first thing that we're going to do is click on code. And I want to import some of the libraries that I know we're going to be using. So I'm going to import NumPy as NP. Next, I'm going to import pandas as PD. And last but not least, I'm going to import Seaborn as SNS. Okay, then I'm going to run the cell by clicking this button here to the left. And we'll give it some time. Okay, so everything looks good there. Now, I need to load some data. So I downloaded a CSV file of individuals that are classified as having cardiovascular disease or having a cardiovascular disease or not. So let's go ahead and load that data to Google. So I'm going to create a new cell. And because I am using Google's website here, I need to use Google's library to upload that data. So again, here we're going to load the data. And I'm going to use the library from google.colab. I'm going to import files. Next, I'm going to create a variable called uploaded and set it equal to files.upload. OK, so now if I run this cell, we should be able to choose our file. So my file is called cardio.csv. And we're going to let it upload. It may take some time. It is a big file is actually going relatively quickly here or relatively quick so let's go ahead and create a new cell and now what we're going to do is we're going to store the data into a variable so I'm going to create a variable called DF which will be short for data frame and I'm going to set this equal to pd dot read underscore csv and we're going to read the CSV called cardio.csv. Then I want to print the data. And 
and I want to print the first the first seven rows of data. So just type df dot head and input the value seven. So here I put print the first seven rows of the data. Okay, so let's go ahead and run this. Okay, so now we see that we get back seven rows or seven individuals, right, that are classified as having a heart disease or not. So we have our ID column here. We have our age column, which looks a little strange, right? You don't know anybody who's 18,393 years old, and that's because the age is in days and not years. Then we have the gender. We have that person's height in centimeters. We have that person's weight in kilograms. We have this column called AP underscore high, and that's the systolic blood pressure. And then we have this AP underscore low, which is the diastolic blood pressure. And then we have that person's cholesterol, and we have a column called GLUC or GLUC, and that's the person's glucose. Then we have a column called smoke, which tells us if that individual smokes or not. Um, a column called alco, which tells us the person's alcohol intake. And we have a column called active, which tells us how physical, how physically active that person is. And then we have our target column called cardio, which tells us if this individual has a cardiovascular disease or not. So if they don't, then it's zero. And again, if they do, it's one. All right. So I think that's pretty good kind of explaining the data here. So let's go ahead and create a new cell. And let's keep looking at this data a little bit. So let's get the shape of the data. So what do I mean by shape? I mean the number of rows and columns. So just type df.shape. And let's run this. And so now we can see that we have 70,000 individuals in our data set or 70,000 rows of data. And we have 13 columns or features on each of these individuals. All right, so let's go ahead and create a new cell. And now let's get a count of all of the empty values in our data set. So again, we're gonna count the empty or null values in in each column. Okay, so in order to do this, just type df dot is in a dot let's see sum and let's run this cell. Okay, so it looks like we're not missing any data for any of the columns, which is pretty good. And just to show you all, maybe we just had the question, you know, is there any missing data? So another way you can just kind of test this is to to type df dot is null and let me see dot values dot any and this should come back with false because we don't have any missing data for any of the columns but if we did it would come back with true so let's go ahead and run this uh, I must have misspelled something here let's see df dot is null dot uh, here we go, values.any. So let's run this again. All right, so now we see that it comes back with false. And th again, this is just a, another way to check for any null or missing values. All right. All right, so let's go ahead and create a new cell. And here I want to view some basic statistics. So just type df dot describe and let's run this. So by basic statistics I meant I want to get the standard deviation, I want to see the mean, I want to see the maximum value, the minimum value, and we can see all of that information for each of the columns here. Okay, so let's take a look at the age column. We can see that the mean age is 
days. And the minimum value is 10,798 days. So I don't know what that is in years, but we have the days here. And the maximum age is 23,713 days old. Okay, so yeah, we can just take a look at some of these statistics, but I think we're we're good for now. So if you want to, you know, check this out, um, this is how you would do it, basically. So let's go ahead and create a new cell. And now in this cell, I'm going to get a count of the number of individuals with heart disease and the number of individuals without heart disease or without a heart disease, right? So here, again, we're going to get a count of the number of patients or individuals with with cardiovascular disease with a cardiovascular disease and without all right so just type df and then we want that cardio column dot value underscore counts I believe it's with an S and let's run this okay so now we can see that there are about 35,021 individuals in our data set that do not have a heart disease and there's about 34,979 individuals that do have a heart disease or cardiovascular disease all right so that's that's pretty pretty close to being even so let's go ahead and create a new cell and instead of us just seeing the numbers maybe you're you're more of a visual person so let's visualize visualize the count so in order to do this just type sns dot count plot and we're going to input the cardio column there all right so let's run this okay and we can easily see that it is about even I can't really tell the difference here so at least we have the numbers from our previous cell to to look at but just from this chart here you can tell that it's about even we have about a you know half and half so it's pretty good so let's go ahead and create a new cell and we're going to continue to kind of explore this data a little bit. So we're going to take a look at the, and actually I'm going to write this in comments, look at the number of people with a cardiovascular disease that exceed the number of people without a cardio vascular disease okay so how are we gonna look at this number well we can do that by looking at their age so let's create create a years column so that's gonna be really easy just type DF left brackets and then we're going to put in years here and we can take our age column and divide it by 365 about the number of days in a year right so we divide it by 365 and then we're going to round and we don't want um, any numbers past the decimal place so we're going to put in zero there for that parameter now now this right here doesn't make our this does not make the values in years an integer so let's go ahead and change or convert these values to be integers so just type df and then years and i could have did this in one step really but that's okay so type pd.2 underscore numeric 
and we're going to input df years. Okay, and then we're going to downcast it to be an integer. All right, so let me just bring this up a little bit. Okay, so everything looks good there. Now let's let's visualize the data. All right, so we're going to create a count plot again. So just type sns dot count plot. This time x will be years, right? That's the years column that we just created. The hue will be cardio. The data that we're going to be using will be df, and our palette will be the colorblind palette. So that's the palette for colorblindness. And to be fancy, we will give we will give our our plot a edge color. Okay, so just type sns dot color underscore palette, and we're going to give it the dark one, and then the number of colors or in colors will be just one. Okay, so hopefully I don't have any errors here. Let's run the cell. Okay, so now we can see by age, um, we can see the the number of people with um, with a heart disease and without a heart disease at that specific age. Now, what's interesting is here we see that, which is age 55, we see that the, the number of people with a cardiovascular disease exceeds that, exceeds the number of people without a cardiovascular disease, okay? So it, it's kind of interesting to see that before age 55, that did not seem to be the case. But now if we look at the rest of these values, it looks like those with a cardiovascular disease outnumber the people without a cardiovascular disease for that same age. So that's pretty interesting. All right, so I hope I said all that correctly. Anyways, let's go ahead and, um, let's go ahead and create a new cell. And now let's get the correlation of the columns. So here I will put get, get the correlation of the columns. Okay, so it, that's pretty easy. We just type df.core and that should be it. All right, so now we can see how the columns are correlated with each other. So for example, ID is 100% correlated with ID. It's the same column. All right, and then ID, which ID, you know, doesn't, doesn't really matter, right? And now that I think about it, we might want to get rid of ID when we're training our model. But um, we can see that ID has a few negative correlations with height, a negative correlation with weight, and so on and so forth. But Again, you might be a visual person, so let's go ahead and create a new cell and let's visualize this data. All right, so I'm gonna put that here, visualize the data. All right, so we're going to import matplotlib.pyplot as plt, and I'm going to type sns dot heat map and we're going to input the correlation and let's give our heat map an annotation so we're going to set and note equal to true and we're going to format this so fmt is going to equal um, a percentage with no with no uh, decimal places 
okay and you might be wondering why am I importing matplotlib uh, that's just so we can change the figure size so I'm gonna type plt dot fix uh, plt dot figure and then we're gonna give it a fix size equal to seven by seven inches and so I guess I should note well, one thing this needs to be like this all right so it's going to be a seven by seven by seven inches figure so some people think that it's pixels but no this is in inches so hopefully everything is right here let's go ahead and run this all right and now we can see um, a little more visually the correlation between the columns all right so if we take a look at that cardio column here we can see that it has about 24 percent positive correlation with age 18 percent positive correlation with weight 22 percent with cholesterol and so on and so forth and also you'll notice that it has the same correlation number for both years and age and years and age have a hundred percent correlation okay so we need to get rid of that years column it it doesn't add any additional uh, value all right so let's go ahead and create a new cell and in this cell I think we need to prepare our data for our machine learning model so I need to remove that column years and I may actually remove the ID column as well so let's go ahead and do that now so let's remove or drop the years column so in order to do this just type DF equals DF dot drop and so we're going to drop that years column that we created and we have to do that on the axis um, equal to one so that's the column Okay, so let's go ahead and run that okay so I'm gonna create a new cell and in this cell I want to remove the or remove or drop the ID column All right that doesn't provide really anything about the individual so I'm just gonna type DF equals DF dot drop and we'll drop ID so X is going to equal one and let's go ahead and run that. Okay. So let's go ahead and create a new cell here. And now let's split the data into the independent data set, also known as X and a target data set, also known as the dependent data set or Y. All right. So I put that in comments here, split the data into feature data and target data okay so let's um, create a variable called X so X will be the X will be the independent data set and we're going to set this equal to DF dot I lock where we want all of the rows and then we want all of the columns except for that last column okay and then we'll create my Y variable which will be the target data set and it's going to contain it's going to contain all of the rows from the from the last column from the target column all right, so let's go ahead and run this. Okay, and actually, let's put on dot values here. Dot values. So it should be an array now. All right, perfect. So let's go ahead and create a new cell. And we're going to split the data again. So split the data again. But this time, we're going to split it into. 75% training data set and 25% testing data set 
All right, so from sklearn.model underscore selection, I'm going to import the train underscore test underscore split function. So let's go ahead and create our variables, x underscore train and x underscore test, y underscore train and y underscore test and set it equal to train test split and we need to tell it the data sets which is x and y and then we need to give it a test size so our test size again is 25 percent so it's going to be 0 0.25 and then we're going to give it a random state so i'm going to give it the random state equal to one let's go ahead and run this all right so i must have misspelled something here probably this random all right there we go let's go ahead and run this again okay now let's go ahead and create a new cell all right so in this get i'm um, sorry in this cell we're going to scale so i want to do feature scaling and by that i mean i want to scale the data to be values between zero and one so scale the the values in the data to be values between 0 and 1 inclusive all right so we're going to have to use another library so from sklearn dot pre preprocessing I'm going to import standard scalar so I'm going to create a variable called sc this will be our standard scalar object and then we're going to want to transform our our x train data set so just type sc dot fit underscore transform well we want to fit and transform it right so fit underscore transform and then we're going to input x underscore train and then I'm going to store that back into X train. And then we're going to basically do the same thing for the Y. Um, I'm sorry, not for the Y, but for the X underscore test data set as well. So I'm just going to copy that and paste it here. And I'm going to change train to test. And here, same thing to test. Okay. Now, let me think. We've already fit and transformed the data, so I don't need to do that again. We just need to transform it. Okay, so let's go ahead and run this. All right, good. Let's create a new cell. All right, now we're going to use a machine learning model. So we're going to use the random forest classifier. So I'm going to need another library for this. So from sklearn.ensemble, I'm going to import random forest classifier. So I'm going to create a variable called forest and set it equal to random forest classifier. So that will be our, our object. And I'm going to give this classifier a number of estimators. So we're going to set a number of estimators equal to 10, a criterion. So we're going to use entropy. And the random state will be the same number as the random state when we split the data. So random underscore state will be equal to 1. All right, next let's train this model. So just type forest.fit. And we're going to train it on our training data set. So that's x underscore train and y underscore train. All right, so let's run this cell. All right, so it's done. Let's go ahead and create a new cell. And in this cell, I want to test the model's accuracy on the training data set. All right. So I'm actually going to create another variable. I'm going to call it model, and I'm going to set it equal to forest. All right, 
So now we're just going to get the score, so model.score of the training data set. So we have to input X train and Y train. And this should give us the accuracy. So let's go ahead and run this. All right, so not bad. So the model is about 97.99% accurate on the training data set. So that's pretty good. So let's test how accurate the model is on the test data. So let's go ahead and create a new cell. And again, we're going to test the model's accuracy on the test data set. All right, so I'm going to use a, another library here. So from sklearn.metrics, I'm going to import confusion matrix. All right, so I'm going to create a variable called cm and set it equal to confusion underscore matrix. And it's going to take in the, the actual values from our test data set. And then it's going to take in the values that our model predicts for the X test data set. So um, what we're putting in here is the, the actual values, the actual target values from our test data set. And we are also putting in what our model thinks those values will be from using the, the X underscore test or, um, or the feature data set. Right, or the independent data set. All right, so I'm going to create a few more variables. I'm going to create one called TN, which will be short for true negative, and that's going to be located in position 00, zero of our confusion matrix, and another one called TP, which will be short for true positive, and that will be in position 1, 1 of the confusion matrix. Fn for false negative. So that will be position 1, 0, and then false positive or Fp for short. And that's in position 0, 1. Okay. And then next we're going to print the confusion matrix. So I'm just going to type print and then cm. And I want to print the model's accuracy on the test data. So I'm going to print model test accuracy equals, and then we just do dot format. OK. And so to get this model's accuracy, we could do the calculation ourselves. So we could take the true positive plus the true negative, and we can divide it by all the values. So divide it by TP plus TN plus FN plus FP. All right. Okay, so let's go ahead and run this. Uh, I figured uh, I would make a mistake somewhere. So let's see um, here. So let's run this. All right. So not bad. What we can see is that the model got about 70.2% accuracy on our test data. So again, that's not bad, right? It's not bad. But when you're dealing with people and patients, you still want your model to be much, much more accurate than that, you know. You really want it to be 100%, but that's not always the case. But we definitely want it to be better than 70.2%. So maybe you all can play with this model and make it better. But anyways, I really hope you all enjoyed this video on cardiovascular disease and on machine learning and Python. And hopefully, again, you guys can make this model better. And who knows, uh, maybe you will create something that would make a very positive impact in the world. So thank you all for watching this video. Uh, please leave any questions you have in the comment section. If I don't get to them, maybe other people will. Uh, if you really like this video, please hit that like button. 
it helps out I have many other videos on machine learning and Python topics so be sure to check those out and if you're not a subscriber to the channel please subscribe and as always again thank you for watching and I'll see you all in the next video